trading with stacks. So we'll be using stacks, icebergs, and shark food for the basic bread and butter setup that I'm trading personally every day. Make sure if you want a copy of this chart, just follow the link in the guide to make a copy of it. It will be exactly the same, all set up for you there. So first, I typically start the day by referencing the stack. So here we are in London session, right? And so I'm referencing the stats for that session. So when you're in this session, when you have this session selected, you see, it will automatically represent the statistics for each signal type in that session, right? Historically. So that will help to frame probabilities for you okay so whether to expect a strong probable signal type and trade or whether to be cautious because the signals might have historically negative ev expected value so referencing the stats is pretty damn key to choosing the right risk and leverage so if it's decent if it's a uh, good ev as dictated on the right here, then of course it's okay to use your normal leverage and risk parameters. Let's say it was negative EV, well, then you're going to reduce your exposure slightly. So if the stats show a low strength of EV, reducing exposure. Being more dynamic with your stop, so getting that stop in as soon as you can, just to limit any potential downside. That's how I trade it. And that's what I found most effective over the last few years. Secondly, when you come into the session, right, I want to refer to the local environment. So what do I see here? We come in, yep, yeah, and what's above us and what's below us? Well, I can see nothing above us locally here on the one minute, okay? And all I see below is a area where we have not only an iceberg, right, we also have a shark food level yep of course stacks has shark food inside it already but i like to have it as a reference on the chart too because then if you click into shark food you can choose to remove or leave the hit levels right so it shows you what we've already raided okay what price is already visited and that allows us to frame and form biases directionally right and be able to still reference that on the chart so what do i then see well because in this example we have the iceberg and shark food below hovering above the stack there yeah well that catches our attention doesn't it as a big player load up zone right so this is increasing our localized probabilities even with a diverting historical performance of the certain signal type that fires, to be specific, if we had negative EV for a bullish A setup, which this would be because an A setup is characterized by sweeping shark food into a stack, even if it had a negative expectancy because of our localized probabilities all favoring that as a trade zone, you can take the trade anyway with more confidence, right? So sometimes you're going to get outliers in data where you can be framing your own high-grade setups just based on the local environment. And it's only three indicators. Remember that, three stacks and the other two, which are framing those probabilities and giving you that confidence factor, right? Which is more of a psychological thing, isn't it, than anything? But at least it allows us to grade whether to risk on and risk off yeah so whether to apply leverage and whether to hold back and be more combative more conservative more whatever and so yeah that's kind of how i'm doing it so let's do a little walkthrough here of the trade and so we see that we hit the stack the moment we get that a signal you're in right so this is where you should probably take a moment to watch the alert setup video 
because this is going to help you optimize your signal tracking to make sure that you're never going to miss a setup, right? And so how would I operate here? I would, I would enter my trade here, yeah, at the open of that next candle, yeah, is when you're going to get the alert. And I would set my stop loss. Maybe the stop loss would have been closer and I'd be happy to place it there. But in this example, the stop, the average adverse move suggested stop is kind of a bit further than I even want, right? So if I'm zooming in, you can see that's the swing there. And typically I'm just going to place my stop at the swing of wherever the signal printed. And then of course, TP1, I'm typically 80% out of my position. And then I leave a runner to the full average favorable move, right? And that's it, really. It's as simple as that. So if you're going to start overcomplicating it and try and merge all of your previous knowledge as a new subscriber to the tools into the way we trade stacks in the simplest way possible, well, you got another thing coming because it could just be as simple as this for you. Entry, stop loss, break, go break even after TP1. And there you have it. All targets obliterated. So keep it simple, rely on the tools because they are much more intelligent than you and I on our own. Okay, so now here we actually have a really, really powerful example of when the close clusters logic, so you can see here close clusters, it's identified five clusters in close proximity to one another in this session, extended New York Gold. And so what that says to us is when we get here, you ever hear of traders going, man, we're just chopping around. I wish I could know when price was going to chop. Well, we can as stacks traders because we have this very useful engine inside that can literally tell us when to be cautious. Okay. So watch this now as price travels down. Yeah. You'll get this little alert message that comes up when you're in close proximity as we go. Let's go here. You see close clusters. And by the way, you can make this any configuration you want. So maybe you want it just on the, you want the close clusters message next to price, or maybe you just want it in the center, middle center, change the coloring and whatnot. Just depends how you want it. But I know that traders on their own would not be able to just reference that and trust themselves to remember, right? You need a big message on the chart always. So now that we have close clusters, what are we doing? Sure, if we got a long signal, then we'd entertain it, but it's like the previous example of having a low EV trade, right? And you get a signal from a stack. You'd take it maybe. Everything else looks right. There's no structure in the way. There's no iceberg in the way, whatever. You'd take it, but you'd be cautious, right? And uh, an indication to remain on your toes as a trader and expect the unexpected is worth its weight in gold in trading. So we have that. Close clusters, if you see that on the screen, what are you going to do? You're going to be careful. And as you can see, the rest of the session, what happens, right? We just chop around. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. And eventually we just end up rolling over, I believe. So, but yeah, you get the gist, okay? And we just did that until the end of the day. So that's the power of close clusters, monitoring, and yeah, just another reason to rely solely on the tools, which are far more intelligent than you and me put together. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions, get in touch with the representatives in the Discord. Um, they will be more than happy to help. Thank you.